Hi, everyone. I don't know if you, if you can uh, hear me and see me now. Yes, Adriana, yes. we can see you. Okay, perfect. Uh, David, I don't know if uh, 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 the people is connecting. Yeah, please go ahead. We can start. Yeah, perfect. Uh, well, uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm Adriana Romero. Uh, welcome to the nutrient recovery from wastewater to produce fertilizers for agriculture event. Uh, organized in the framework of, in the framework of the Life Enriched Project, a European research project co-funded by the Life Program. Uh, thank you all for joining us today. Uh, we have a nice agenda ahead uh, with great experts from different fields that will give us their vision on nutrient recovery from wastewater and the use of estrobite and ammonium salts as fertilizers for agriculture. Um, before starting, I would uh, like to share uh, with you some information regarding the development of the event and your participation. Uh, first of all, this session is being recorded and some pictures might be taken during the development. Only the presenters can turn on their cameras and microphones. And if you have any questions, please write them down on the chat and we will try to answer them during the question and ask sessions. And if your question is addressed to one specific presenter, please indicate that in your message on the chat. Uh, so uh, we will begin now with the first presentation of the event in which uh, Nadia Lamhanda from the European Commission will talk about the LIFE program, uh, Europeans funding instrument for the environment and climate action. And as I said, uh, Life and Rich project has been co-funded by a Life and Rich program. So we are really happy uh, to have you, Nadia, in this event. Uh, the floor is yours. Thanks a lot. Uh, I hope you hear me well and you, is it okay, the sound? Okay, yes. great. So I will share now my presentation. There it is. And I hope you see it well as well. Um, is it okay? Yeah. Okay, great. So, um, indeed, so I am Nadia Lamandaz. I am a project advisor. I was following uh, the Life and Rich uh, project uh, for all this duration. And for me, it's an honor to present you the, um, uh, to, to, to intervene now today in, uh, in the final uh, conference of that uh, project. Um, so I will present you my 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 presentation will not be on life uh, and rich in particular because uh, you will hear much more from the project proponent themselves, but will be more on the on the program and uh, particularly the new program that just started uh, this year. And I will focus my presentation on the subprogram circular economy and quality of life. So um, that's the content of the presentation. I will not spend too much time because I don't have a lot. But uh, basically, uh, I just wanted to, to also present you CINEA. CINEA is the new agency that uh, has combined program, uh, uh, previous program and new program from uh, uh, two main agencies, INEA and EASME. Uh, the LIFE program was before in EASME uh, and um, now has reached this CINEA. CINEA is, is interesting because, like, as you can see here, has um, a lot of programs. Some of them, uh, like LIFE program, like Horizon Europe Climate Energy, are mostly dedicated to uh, sustainability, to environment, to climate action. So. Um, Basically, uh, but others are also very close to that uh, to that uh, field, like, for example, the successor of EMFF called European Maritime Fishery and Agriculture Funds. All those programs are 
uh, going around innovation, around uh, sustainability and uh, a greener uh, Europe. And uh, so this is why CINEA is also called the Green Deal Agency. And uh, we are quite proud of that. And I think it's, uh, it's really important because this will also uh, allow us when we do one of our important uh, tasks, which is policy feedback, uh, policy feedback, what that means, basically, you know that your project, the life, for example, the life project or any project also under Horizon, uh, which are more research oriented, but all of them are somehow contributing to implement European policy uh, in a specific field. And uh, so basically those uh, policies are developed in the Directorate General. And what we do, uh, they, 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 based on those, we developed calls proposal uh, in the specific uh, uh, for life, for instance, you will see a bit later, which are uh, somehow inviting uh, project proponent, entities, organization, private sector, local authority, research institute to come with their ideas, with their knowledge and propose to the European uh, um, European Union somehow, uh, and uh, for the benefit at the end of the citizens, propose uh, their ideas and how to best implement those environmental policy to have impact uh, finally on the environment, on the climate, on citizen, all these policy. So basically, this is why is policy feedback very important. So basically, policy feedback goes two sides. Policies, we we publicize them towards uh, towards the the different economical actor, the researcher, uh, the local authorities. But we also bring back from the project implemented by all those uh, this this ecosystem. We bring back to the policymakers, and this is one of our essential role, which is not very well known. Um, obviously, one of our core work also is to make sure that the project that uh, were submitted, selected and therefore implemented are done, let's say, uh, following the rules, because we are talking about uh, taxpayer money. And we also have uh, uh, an, an important part of our job, making sure that we have the synergy among the different programs, as you can see. So now I will come present you more precisely the LIFE program. So basically, LIFE program, you can see here, you have three, you have four sub programs. Three of them are somehow ring the bells because nature and biodiversity, circular economy and quality of life, which is uh, the successor, if you wish, of environmental resource efficiency under which life and rich was submitted and climate mitigation and adaptation, which is uh, all the climate action uh, tools. You have a newcomer in, uh, in the life family, which is the clean energy transition. This uh, program is, um, is coming from Horizon uh, uh, 2020, H2020. So basically, there is a, a quite a difference between um, in, let's say in the approach. The, the three first uh, programs, the historical, if we can call them like this, sub program are very much uh, bottom up. So basically, we define some, uh, some topics and uh, we invite uh, as I said before, uh, proponent, project proponent, to come with their ideas. In the last one, uh, the what we call the parent DG, so DG Energy in that case, uh, are have identified a series of um, policy or gap in the policy implementation in that specific field of energy transition, and what they well, they are looking for uh, meeting those gaps. So basically, what they are doing. They are defining some uh, rather prescriptive uh, call for proposal with uh, some um, element of the also the consortium, uh, which consortium, which country sometimes has to be covered and what type of, uh, of beneficiary can apply. And all this is much more prescriptive than the, 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 the others, which are very flexible in terms of uh, duration, in terms of project, in terms of consortium. So um, that, that's, a, I would say, a rather big difference, that, but still uh, uh, all of them now are in the same family. 
program uh, circular economy and quality of life. So here you will recognize basically all the area that were, as I said previously, in the environmental resource efficiency. So basically waste, circular economy, water, urban environment, what we call environmental health, noise, chemicals, air, and the type, the type of actions are also very similar. So basically what we are looking for, we are looking for projects that would, for instance, um, uh, want to green uh, a specific process, make it more resource efficient, making make it more um, less polluting, uh, chemical substitution, substitution. All these should be implemented uh, in real condition. So that's a very important. It's not research. And um, Adriana, sorry to say, but the life project, life and risk, was not a, a research project, pro project, but was an implementation demonstration project. And um, that's very important. This is how we, why we select them, actually, because it's outside the lab and it goes uh, to, the, to more the, the, the implementation, the demonstration, and the, the piloting and the demonstration. But also support uh, also uh, uh, EU legislation. You can have a governance awareness raising project. And we have a different type of project called integrated project. Now they are called strategic project. And those ones are um, supporting uh, the, the implementation of a, a national plan, could be national or regional plan, uh, in specific uh, policy area that are defined. So uh, here I will go very quickly. Basically, what I wanted to just to show is that the standard action project is the new name of what we called before the traditional project. Life and Rich is one of those uh, traditional. Now they will be called standard action project. So the standard action project, what is uh, what is uh, what 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 they are? Basically, they are they can develop, demonstrate, promote innovative techniques like life and rich, huh? but they can also uh, contribute to the application of best practices. And this is a novelty in this program, because before, especially under the circular economy, the previous circular uh, uh, resource efficiency um, thematic area, the best practice were not allowed. So basically, we were, we were looking only for uh, an innovation element. Uh, now it's it's a bit less uh, like this. So basically we welcome as well for some specific topic the best practice. So basically um, the, 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 there are uh, in the call document, I don't have much time now uh, to, 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 to develop that, but there are clear indication of what we are, um, how, what, what, what we mean by best practice in the specific condition of the program or innovative techniques. So this is well described, there are definitions. Um, there are also a series of uh, recording that you can, you can still go there and, and, and have a look. It's, it, it's, uh, it's well done by my colleagues. They're really explaining the difference between breast practice and innovation. And um, so just to complete here, so as I said before, standard action project, they are flexible. Co-financing rate is 60% uh, maximum. So basically the consortium, each partner and the consortium has to come with 60%, uh, with 40, sorry, percent of uh, non-EU contribution money. So it cannot be, for example, another EU um, like H2020, it has to be a um, non-EU uh, grant, if you wish. And, uh, uh, but it could be on resources. It could also be other funds from uh, a national uh, resource fund or anything else, uh, national, um, let's say, uh, um, yeah, funds. Uh, it could be also uh, private uh, sector funds. Um, and it could be also revenue generated by the action itself. Huh? That, that's uh, less, uh, less common, but it, it, it's happened as well. Um, so what is important also is that we have a yearly call for proposal. So basically every year, now the one that is open today uh, is closing actually today. Huh? That's the last uh, the last day, and uh, and 
and the next call will be open somehow in spring. I cannot give you yet the, the date, but uh, we will be publishing that in our website very soon. Uh, I, I, we put the, the link uh, in the presentation. Um, so the topic under the circular economy uh, quality of life sub programs are again for those who knows the, 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 the previous edition of the, the program ring the bell. So basically you have uh, what we called before resource efficiency and waste. Now it's one uh, topic, priority topic called circular economy and waste and under which uh, life and rich, for instance, had submitted uh, their proposal. You have also soil, air, noise, water, chemical. Um, for those who know, there is no more forest. Forest has been now uh, more under uh, nature for all the restoration of the biodiversity and the habitat under forest or climate action uh, for the part on, uh, on adaptation of the forest. Uh, what you have, you have also the previous uh, environment, um, uh, where an, of an, an environment and for information governance now is under the, the call uh, circular economy. So you have a specific topic on that with allocated resources for it. And you have also a newcomer called Environment uh, European Biohouse. This is an initiative, a new initiative. Uh, that is um, looking for uh, some project uh, uh, related to the to this initiative, and I, I don't have time to explain because it will will eat too much of my of my time. So, but um, all this is very well described in the call document, and the relevance to the topic is assessed under the award criterion called relevance. So. Circular economy and waste, you have two big, let's say, uh, part. You have the circular economy and the environment. And here you see there is no innovation looking the farm. We don't look for necessarily for innovation. Obviously, innovation is welcomed, huh? but we are not looking for it. So basically, we welcome also best practices in the, the, the scope of what we mean by best practices. And here, what, what you can, I don't have the time to read that, obviously, but what you can see, what is important here to notice is that we are really looking for um, getting high in the waste uh, hierarchy. So going towards the circularity, going towards also the, pre the waste prevention. So this is key, huh? as you can see here, we are talking about project durability, uh, reuse, repair, um, environmental solution, that are indeed including the circularity. Um, we are getting also to uh, various uh, horizontal support that will help that circularity to become a reality. We know all these, all those are clearly identified as uh, bottlenecks, as gaps in the policy implementation to enable real circularity and, and, and a true management of uh, our, um, our um, a circular e economy. So all this normally will, we hope, uh, supporting this, uh, this uh, the EU action plan, actually. Uh, the recovery of resources, and this is uh, before was under the waste uh, topic. This we are mostly looking, uh, we are looking for innovation. So it means that if your project and the solution that you are bringing is not innovative, it, it's not that it will be excluded, huh? it's still will be assessed, will be looked at. However, uh, it will be, will receive less point, uh, less well scored than the project which is innovative because we are looking for innovation. So that, that's a very important. And you are looking for innovation, you have to somehow demonstrate, bring element in the, the application that you are submitting that your, um, your solution uh, in the different areas is uh, innovative. Uh, well. So I think I'm, 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 I will stop there. Maybe we'll have a few time for one or two uh, questions. Just wanted to say that we have a website which is very well um, populated with a lot of, of information on the call. So on the current call, but be reassured that the next call, uh, especially in uh, circular economy and economy of, of quality of life will be similar 
So basically, you don't uh, lose your time if you look to the document. If you go to the also to the call document in the funding and tender portal, uh, this is where now uh, we are we are uh, welcoming the, the the this is a new submission and uh, the um, submission and after the monitoring for the for the successful project. So there is one shop now with all the, the other program. So go there uh, and uh, get familiar because it's, yeah, we know it takes time really to develop a project. So you can start now, even for next year, it will be only good. Um, that's it. Thank you very much. And um, I don't know if uh, I will get out from there. And uh, Thank you, Nadia. Um, sharing my sc screen. Let's see if we have any any questions. Maybe we'll have time for one or two. No one want to to be the first. <laughs> Okay, Adriana, what I said, uh, I will have to leave you. I'm, I'm, I'm super sorry for that. I cannot stay. However, I will. Um, I wish you first a very nice uh, uh, conference. And uh, obviously, if you have any specific question that you can't answer, and uh, I can, I can answer it by writing anytime. So just send that, send them to me, and I will do my best to to answer quickly. Thank you for, for the offer and for uh, coming and participating and join us. Thank you so much, Nadia. And see you tomorrow. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Bye. That's right. Bye. Um, well, uh, now uh, we will move on to the presentation regarding Life and Rich project. Uh, first, I will introduce the project, the uh, context and objectives, and then all the partners involved in this initiative will share uh, the work that they have done, uh, the results obtained, uh, and at the end, we uh, will have uh, uh, general conclusions that we can take from, from, the, from the project. I will share my screen. Let me know. Um, I think you can. Yes, we can, can see, it, see it now. Perfect. I will put there. OK. Uh, well, the, the Life and Rich uh, a project that stands for enhanced nitrogen and phosphorus recovery from wastewater and integration in the value chain. It's a project that um, it's now coming to the end and it has been uh, three and a half years of, of work with all the consortium partners that will uh, speak now. It's the TACWAS, the coordinator, and we have the University, Polytechnic University of Valencia, the Polytechnic uh, University of uh, Catalonia, uh, the uh, research and technology uh, in our aliment, in our food, in our, uh, food um, thematic IRTA, the wastewater treatment plant operator, Emuasa, and the private company, Aigos del Sagarra Garriga. Um, the uh, main objective of the project is to uh, recover nutrients from wastewater treatment plants and valorizing them in the agriculture sector. And for that, we uh, have on the project different uh, different uh, sub objectives uh, for the more um, technology related part we have the objective of increased efficiency of phosphorus recovery with new alliteration schemes the validation of a new treatment train for uh, nitrogen recovery in the wastewater treatment plant 
uh, for, for both nitrogen and phosphorus recovery and the development of membrane contactors technology uh, for the production of ammonium salts from the part of the of the nitrogen. We also have uh, the objectives of promoting the agronomic value of the digested sludge as a source of nutrients and organic carbon and also the uh, test and optimize the fertilizer mixtures for crops of interest and the demonstration of the agronomic properties of the different fertilizers obtained, which you uh, have um, on the screen, the estrobite, the ammonium nitrate, and combining with the sea, which is sludge. And finally, we also have as objective to define a business model for the entire value chain and the business plan adapted to Spain. And finally, the assessment of uh, replicability and transferability of the business model to other European countries. So, um, regarding the value change of uh, Life from Rich project, uh, is the one that you can visualize here. We start from wastewater treatment plants and we end in, in agriculture uh, sector uh, by implementing a circular economy strategy um, where we have at first stage uh, the prototype within the project, which includes a full scale illustration and a pilot plants for phosphorus and nitrogen recovery. With this scheme, we have been able to produce different uh, products. We have tested the produce of, uh, production of estrobite and ammonium nitrate, but the technology could be used for different ammonium salts. And finally, we have made a, a characterization of the products, a definition of the uh, different mixtures, and we have test agronomic properties of the different um, of the different fertilizers to finally um, implement them in a suitable uh, and a sustainable business model that uh, can be implemented through a business plan. Uh, the uh, prototype uh, phase of the project has been uh, developed in the wastewater of Murcia Este in Spain. It has a capacity of uh, uh, 100,000 cubic meters per day of treatment. It has a conventional uh, activated sludge process, uh, including nitrogen and um, biological nitrogen and phosphorus removal. And in the sludge line, they have uh, it has anaerobic digestion and uh, the sludge the wastering phase. And also, it comes with gasometers for biogas storage and a cogeneration plant. And the main driver. Uh, within within this uh, within this project for this wastewater treatment plant to be selected as the site was that it has uh, currently operational problems related to uncontrolled estrobite precipitation, uh, pipe blockages, solids on the equipments, anti fooling raging consumption are really high. So uh, it's it was a, a interesting site to test this and develop this uh, this technology. Uh, for you to take a peek at the Life and Rich project layout, it is simplified in this scheme. We have the basic structure of the wastewater treatment plant in Murcia Este, and we have implemented the alliteration part in the sludge line uh, by mixing the uh, um, the, the sludges um, uh, releasing the phosphorus, the phosphates, and finally uh, send them to an aerobic digestion, but obtaining a rich a phosphorus enriched uh, stream that it's uh, entering the crystallization unit uh, so phosphorus can be recovered as uh, as estrobite also uh, after this crystallization unit uh, the uh, end recovery unit uh, can be implemented but we also have tested this um, these uh, two pilot uh, scale technologies separately by using on, on also uh, centrates uh, that comes from the, the watering of the sludge. So this is the, the, the really uh, general introduction of, uh, of the project and, and now uh, uh, different uh, partners will be uh, sharing their screens. I stop sharing mine and the next one is uh, Ramon from UPV go ahead please okay, yeah thank you so 
so open to share my screen. Can you see my presentation? Yes, we can see it. Yeah, we can. Okay. Thank you, uh, Adriana. Uh, uh, thanks for the, the introduction. And now, uh, Mark Castro from MOASA and myself from the Polytechnic University of Valencia are going to present the implementation and results of the alliteration process. The aim of this part of the project is the implementation of a novel sludge management strategy aiming to enhance the potential peer recovery and to minimize the uncontrolled phosphorus precipitation. Precipitation produced mainly during the anaerobic digestion. We are going to present the different steps for the retration implementation, which are the characterization of the wastewater treatment plant, the model calibration with the BNRM2 model, the simulation of different alternatives, uh, definition of the optimal, optimal sludge line configuration, the definition of the process control strategy, uh, the full scale implementation, and finally, the full scale illustration operation. So, I don't know. Can you hear me? Oh, wait. Okay. Uh, so, uh, in this figure, uh, shows the Murcia Este, which was the treatment plan. So, as Adriana said, uh, the water line has biological nitrogen and phosphorus removal. The primary and secondary sludge are thickened in a gravity and that thickened respectively. And both thickened sludge are mixed and anaerobically digested. And finally, the water is with centrifuge. The numbers represent the uh, correspond to the streams analyzed during the three analytical campaigns carried out in different points of the water and the sludge lines. The main results obtained in the, in the analytical campaign were that the wastewater treatment plant shows a quite variable and poor peer removal efficiency in the water line, with an average value around 40 and 50 percent. Uh, regarding the, the quantification of the uncontrolled precipitation in the wastewater treatment plant, it was calculated uh, that a large amount of the influent phosphorus is precipitated in the slash line, around 65% of the influent phosphorus uh, precipitates mainly in the anaerobic digester and secondary digesters. So therefore, uh, a very low amount of phosphorus, uh, which is less than 4%, is available if we try to recover it from centrates, which is the typical stream where phosphorus used to be recovered. Uh, the calibration of the BNRM2 model was performed tuning the model parameters uh, to fit the predicted values with the ones obtained in the analytical campaigns. As an example, this figure shows the comparison between the simulated and the experimental values of different solids, organic matter fractions, orthophosphate and ammonia in the different streams. Once calibrated the, the model, uh, it was simulated the modification of the current sludge line according to the three different configurations. The comparison of the results were performed taking into account the potential peer recovery and the economic aspects. Uh, the operational parameters are will be shown later. Uh, where the operational parameters optimized were the primary sludge flow and the alliteration flow. So, uh, the simulated results of each alternative combined with the LCC and LCA analysis let us to define the optimal slide line configuration, which consists on two steps. In the first one, the thickened uh, secondary sludge with PAOS and a large amount of the internal polyphosphate, which depends basically on the biological peer removal efficiency in the mainstream, is pumped towards the illustration tank. In this tank, the fermentation of the sludge triggers the internal phosphorus release. And in a second step, the fermented secondary sludge is eliterated over the primary thickener in order to obtain an overflow stream, highly rich with soluble phosphorus available to be recovered. This configuration has been implemented at full scale in the facility as shown in this picture. The green lines represent uh, the new elements 
uh, introduced in the wastewater treatment plants, such as pipes, pumps, bulbs, the electrician tank, and the instrumentation for its control. And uh, it is remarkable that uh, the operation of this uh, single valve allows the reversibility of the sludge line configuration between the new and the original configuration. And to warranty the, the stability of the sludge, uh, the nutrition process, it was implemented a fuzzy logic control system with different control loops indicated in the red lines. Uh, the core of the control system lied on the ability to maintain the sludge blanket uh, in, the, in the primary thickeners around a set point in both uh, thickeners, maximizing the nutrition flow and also the phosphate concentration in the, in the recovery stream. Now, Mar uh, Castro is going to present the, uh, the full scale implementation. Mar? Yes, thanks, Ramon. I'm going to, to show you some pictures of the wastewater treatment plant and how this process has been implemented in the in the in the plant at full scale. We have included an electrician tank that is a deposit made of GRP and with a useful volume of 720 cubic meters. We have also included new uh, piping in order to distribute the, the sludge between the electrician tank or uh, to take it to the missing chamber. We have also included now uh, um, new uh, pumping stations for the primary sludge. We have uh, added new flow meters and electro bulbs in order to auto control and automate all the the process and uh, I, we have also a new equipment to to control the process. We have a force phase sensors and also a sludge blanket level detectors in order to to know the 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 level of sludge in the into the primary setters. We have modified the SCADA in order to include the process and to, to make easy the operation for the operators of the, of the plant. And now I want to, to, to share with you these pictures of the civil works to, to, to include or to install the, the nutrition tank in our plant that uh, was a process more complicated than we expected because Murcia is in a seismic uh, risk area. So the, the, the works were uh, quite difficult. And I think that this is the, the, the most representative uh, unit of the of the processing in our plant. Ramon? Okay. So, uh, go ahead. Uh, then, uh, uh, once we implemented the, the new configuration in the facility, as Mar explained, uh, the nutrition process was operated since May of 2020 during 19 months. Uh, during the first uh, months, it was performed the startup and the collaboration of the sludge blanket K sensors and the collaboration also of the control loops. Between uh, December uh, 2020 to June 2021, it was increased the amount of uh, the secondary thickened sludge towards the nutrition tank. It is represented uh, by the solid line. And as can be seen in this figure, the increase of the amount of biological sludge elytrated increased the concentration of phosphate in the recovery stream, which is represented in orange uh, dots. And as expected, this concentration also increased with the improvement of the phosphorus removal efficiency in the water line, uh, represented in blue dots. And uh, since June 2021 until now, the nutrition was operated with more than 80% of the secondary sludge. And as can be seen, uh, this operational period uh, was quite stable. 
uh, despite some days without elutration due to some problems in the facility not related with the the elutration configuration and and under this uh, in, during this period we obtained uh, that around 20 percent of the influent to the wastewater treatment plant was concentrated in the recovery stream represented in the yellow dots in the bottom figure summarizing uh, as can be seen in this figure, the, the operational configuration uh, uh, for the sorry for the original configuration, the pure four concentration in the overflow of the gravity thickener represents only the three percent of the influent P load to the wastewater treatment, pl treatment plant. This amount increased up to twenty percent when elutrating more than 80% of the biological sludge and up to 25% elutrating 100% of the biological sludge. However, uh, despite the good process performance observed with the new operation scheme, it is expected to improve its results once optimized the biological peer removal in the water line. As probably mentioned, during the operation of the new sludge line configuration, uh, around less than 50% of the inflamed phosphorus was biological removal, removed. And so uh, therefore, uh, the, the improve of this bi biological peer removal process will increase the polyphosphate storage by PAOS and therefore the potential amount of phosphorus solubilized and extracted with the primary uh, thickener overflow. And finally, Mar is going to explain the conclusion. Yes. After near two years of operation, these are our conclusions. Currently, the lutration operation is steady in the wastewater treatment plant. We are treating the 80% of the biological sludge because higher proportion of sludge leads to problems related to the value retention time of the digesters. And so far, the main efforts observed are that uh, there are not other problems in the in the area and neither corrosion problems in the process units and the consumptions of autifolium reagents are lower and also uh, there is a significant reduction of strobile precipitation in the equipment allowing to raise the reduction of the periodicity of the physical cleanings of the centrifuge that is very important for, for us because the uncontrolling precipitation of strobite was a, a very, very big problem in our plant. Okay, so that's all. Thank you very much. Continue Thanks. Showing. Thank you both. Uh, now, uh, it should be a Monica, I think, uh, from the uh, UPC to uh, explain uh, uh, um, the part related with membrane contactors and nitrogen recovery. Uh, hi, Monica. You are muted. Hello. Hi. Uh, when you are ready. I will share my screen. Can you see? Uh, yes. Okay, so the Universitat Politecnica de Catalunya Barcelona Tech has been in charge of designing the nitrogen recovery pilot unit and has given technical support to Setaqua during the operation of the prototype in the wastewater treatment plant in Murcia. The main idea for the nitrogen recovery pilot unit was to integrate a novel and compact technique named liquid-liquid membrane contactors for ammonia recovery in a wastewater treatment plant. In this case, liquid-liquid membrane contactor was studied as a promising technological solution after a pre-concentration stage using granular zeolites. In this case, the zeolites process is used to recover the ammonium from the main or site stream and produce untreated effluent ammonia-free. Ammonium is sorbed in the zeolites and when this material reaches its maximum capacity, a regeneration step using sodium hydroxide is carried out, concentrating ammonium around five times. Then, an ammonium-rich eluate is stored. 
This stream with high pH is treated by liquid-liquid membrane contactors. Liquid-liquid membrane contactor unit separates two liquid phases by hydrophobic porous hollow fiber membranes. Each side of the contactor is named lumen inside the fibers and shell outside the fibers. Thus, liquid-liquid membrane contactors allow the selective transport of ammonia gas, which is the predominant species at the pH of this stream, from the feed effluent through the membrane. Then, the ammonia gas reacts with an acid stripping solution that is also introduced in the liquid-liquid membrane contactor, producing ammonium salts that could be used, for example, as liquid fertilizers. This makes possible to produce fertilizers a la carte and consequently to increase their potential in different industrial applications, for example, in the agriculture sector. In this case, if we use nitric acid, for example, as acid in the stripping solution, it, we are able to produce a nitrogen fertilizer, which is a single nutrient fertilizer, whereas when phosphoric is used, a nitrogen phosphor fertilizer, which is a multinutrient fertilizer, is obtained. On the other hand, an exhausted effluent free of ammonia is also obtained during the liquid-liquid membrane um, contactors process. This stream at high pH can be reused for the zeolite regeneration. The design of the liquid-liquid membrane contactor pilot plan of the, of the Life Enriched project was based on the recovery of ammonia from concentrate solutions. For design, preliminary tests were run at UPC lab facilities using the ammonia-rich effluent obtained after the pre-concentrated step by zeolites. Different parameters were tested at lab scale in order to design the pilot scale unit. We check the influence of feed volume, ammonia feed concentration, we test also different acid stripping solutions, such as phosphoric, nitric, or a mixture of both. We test two-stage two experiments, mimicking two liquid-liquid membrane contactors in series. And also we check which was the best position of the contactor, horizontal or vertical, and also the entrance of, of the inlet streams into the contactor, the shell or the lumen. Results demonstrate that more ammonia recovery could be achieved with less feed volume, while more ammonium cell concentration was achieved working with high feed volume. Besides, more ammonia recovery could be achieved with low ammonia initial concentration, while more ammonium concentration was achieved working with high ammonia initial concentration. About the acid stripping, Phosphoric acid was the best acid stripping solution compared to nitric acid or a mixture of both. It, could, it was possible to recover more ammonium, more ammonium and also to produce a fertilizer more concentrated. On the other hand, global ammonia recovery was higher by using two liquid-liquid membrane contactors in series, as can be seen in figure and also in the table. Um, it was possible to reach around 94% of ammonia recovery. Finally, vertical position allows to achieve better results, while more concentrated ammonium salts and more ammonia recovery were achieved when the feed solution was introduced into the outside through the shell and acid stripping solution was circulated through the inside of the fibers, so the lumen. So, all in all, preliminary lab test results were used to design the pilot um, scale setup. For that, two main streams were designed for the lumen, where the acid stripping solution passed through, and shell, where the feed ammonium solution was introduced. This was possible placing two liquid-liquid membrane contactors at vertical positions in series. In addition, the design considered the cleaning of the liquid-liquid membrane contactors and an air piping line to conduct more exhaustive, more exhaustive cleanings of the membranes. So, after the design, the um, pilot scale was located in the wastewater treatment plant in Murcia and Setaqua operate, operated. So, they will explain the results of this setup. 
So thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Monica. Uh, I will uh, continue now with the uh, uh, designing uh, of a P recovery unit and also uh, the obtained results. I will share my screen again. Can you uh, see it now? Yes, we can see it. Okay, perfect. So we will uh, start first with the uh, uh, results regarding phosphorus recovery on the crystallization unit. Uh, here you have a um, a picture of uh, of the pilot plant that we uh, had on site. Uh, in the top we have the reactor unit, uh, and uh, in the bottom we have a sieve to separate uh, um, um, granules of the survite according to its size. It's a two millimeter uh, diameter sizing, and all the uh, uh, feeding tanks and also chemical pumps. And here uh, for the reactor unit, which is the, the core of the pilot plant, um, uh, you have here the scheme. So the uh, water, the feeding enters from the bottom and it go, uh, goes out from to uh, from the top without the, the phosphorus and nitrogen that has been uh, pre uh, precipitated with uh, with magnesium to form the esterbite. It is a fluid sized bed reactor which has a internal recycling that fluidizes the bed. And we have also in the bottom part the inlet of hydrastic uh, sodium uh, to control pH and also the, uh, the magnesium uh, chloride to uh, help precipitate the, the esterbite. And also the pilot counts with a nerve blower for CO2 stripping, helping to regulate the, um, um, the um, pH without uh, uh, too much uh, costs. So uh, it's a one cubic meter reactor volume. It treats a one cubic meter per hour uh, maximum flow rate. And uh, it is needed that the uh, total solids in suspension are uh, lower than one gram per liter. Uh, and also uh, for a correct uh, operation, uh, it is uh, a need to have around 70 milligrams per liter of phosphorus in uh, phosphates, um, but it can go up to work with uh, higher concentrations around 150 milligrams per liter. So as uh, the main results from the experimentation that we have performed uh, with this uh, pilot unit in between 19, uh, between 2019 and 2021 uh, are related to the super uh, to the feeding with supernatan from primary thickening after elutration. Uh, and uh, also we um, managed to operate with a low uh, content on total suspended solid under 400 milligrams per liter in the inlet. Uh, we uh, achieve stable operation with a uh, minimum 85% of uh, recovery of uh, phosphate, operating at a pH of 8.2, 30% uh, of um, excess of magnesium over phosphorus, and also with a relation for nitrogen and phosphorus of, of 4. Um, the uh, s -right pellets that we obtain uh, grow until uh, 0 0.5 and 2 millimeters, and uh, we uh, obtain a stable production of around 5 or 2 6 kilograms per day of estrobite. Um, uh, you can see in the, in the graphic that uh, the, uh, uh, we operated with 100 milligrams per liter of uh, phosphorus in the inlet, and the outlet was around 15 milligrams per liter. And here you can see the esterite obtained when uh, it's uh, also drying, um, and also a little peak of uh, microscopic uh, images that we obtained to control the growth of the esterite along the along the reactor. In our case, it was uh, coffee-shaped esterite crystals. Um, uh, we also perform. Uh, 
analysis on the astrobite produced and uh, for stable operation uh, we obtain uh, astrobite uh, uh, confirming by the OX uh, analysis uh, that uh, um, has a low content of total organic carbon um, lower than two percent and a low metal content and uh, no pathogens or micropolitans uh, meeting the um, uh, actual requirements under the uh, new fertilizer products regulation um, that will come to force uh, from uh, next year at European level. Um, so it's a uh, it's a really good yield of the of the technology, uh, showing that it's possible to uh, produce this uh, high quality estrobite, that it's uh, suitable for its use as fertilizer. Um, regarding the uh, nitrogen recovery process, uh, this is uh, uh, images from the pilot, the cell lights on the left, and the uh, ammonium, uh, the membrane contactors uh, to produce ammonium salt on the right. Uh, the process has already been explained, so I will uh, dig directly into the main results. For regarding the cell lights, we have a study cell lights capacity over uh, different. Uh, cycles of operation after its regeneration with uh, uh, sodium hydroxide um, um, solution. Uh, we have work at a flow rate of uh, 450 liters per hour, and we uh, um, have uh, used, uh, in this case, the centrates after uh, sludge to watering with a concentration, with a concentration of uh, initially of um, um, Ammonium around 600 milligrams per liter. We achieve um, a concentration factor between 10, uh, between six and 10 uh, times, and uh, the cation exchange capacity uh, measured was between 20 and 25 grams of uh, nitrogen in ammonium per kilogram of zeolite. Um, regarding uh, the uh, Membrane contactor uh, unit. Uh, you can see in the uh, in the graphics how uh, the content of an ammonium is uh, lowering as uh, uh, the uh, ammonia is going to the other side of the membrane along with the acid to precipitate the ammonium salt. And um, uh, we have achieved 91% uh, of uh, uh, ammonium recovering from feed stream. Uh, also, uh, we uh, have learned that the evaporation towards uh, NH3 must, must be uh, considered. And uh, also, we have performed the characterization of the different uh, batches of the fertilizers obtained, and along with uh, pH control, um, pH control uh, procedure in order to assure the uh, um, the uh, passing of the uh, ammonia between the two sides of the membrane. Uh, in um, in uh, the whole uh, combination of the two um, steps of uh, adsorption and membrane contactor, the nitrogen recovery efficiency was of 70 percent. Uh, the 70 uh, seven percent from cell lights and the 91 percent mentioned from membrane contactors. At the end, we have uh, produced uh, 40 liters per week, per week of ammonium nitrate, and also we uh, have accomplished the regeneration of the cell lights between different absorption circles. Um, finally, we achieve uh, ammonium salt, uh, ammonium nitrate with a 20, around 24% in weight of ammonium, being 50% of this ammonium from uh, uh, nitrogen recovery in wastewater treatment plant. And uh, we also have tested uh, the fertilizer produced for metal and micropolitans, and uh, it was uh, detected really low or even not, det uh, not detected uh, the different compounds. So it's uh, also really interesting um, nitrogen removal uh, yield um, that has, uh, has been able to produce uh, 
suitable fertilizer in terms of ammonium content that can be uh, used to uh, to uh, to the field or even to to produce uh, commercial nitrogen fertilizers. So this uh, is the the part from uh, related to uh, pilots operation and the um, characteristics of uh, the fertilizers produced. And now it's uh, uh, time uh, to go to the field trials. Uh, for this part, it will present uh, Mark Carreras. Hi, Mark. Hello, good morning. I'm going to share my screen. Perfect. Can you see it? Uh, not yet. Wait a moment. Uh, yeah, now we can. Okay. Perfect. So, hello, I'm Marc Carreras from IRTA, the Institute of Agri-Food Research and Technology, and I'm going to present the fertilizers produced and the field trials done in the Life and Rich project. This activity has been carried on by IRTA and Aigües Agarra-Garrigas, both from Catalonia and Spain. The aim of this activity was to use both recovered products through estrobite treatment and estrobite plus ammonium nitrate treatment as raw materials for the manufacture of a nutrient solution for fertigation. Fertigation is the injection of water-soluble fertilizer into the irrigation system, while trying to reduce the nitrogen loses, adjusting the nutrient solution composition. The yield quality product and the environmental impact results were compared with a conventional fertigation with synthetic fertilizers. The field trial done were done in three horticultural crops, tomato, broccoli, and lettuce, in two different conditions, in Irta Cabrils under greenhouse control conditions, in two growing media, soilless and soil trial, and the other one was done in Lleida in two locations, Agramun and Castelldans, under open air conditions. Now I'm going to explain the results about the greenhouse field trials with tomato crops. We can see that all the treatments have achieved the objective production and that there were no significant difference between control and estrubite, neither in soil and soilless tria. However, we found significant difference with sun treatment in 2019. In 2020 campaign, we changed the tomato variety and then we found no significant difference. Thus, probably the results depend on the ammonium tolerance of the tomato variety. Moreover, no significant difference were found in fruit quality and fruit nutritional content, except for magnesium due to the struvite composition and the phosphorus just in soil trial campaign 2019. About the total biomass, there were just difference in the soil trial in 2019, but control was lower. About the greenhouse field trial with broccoli and lettuce crops, we can say that all the treatments achieved the objective production and that no significant difference were found in broccoli production and aerial biomass. However, we found that sun treatment show a higher diameter in 2020 campaign. About the lettuce crop, we found no difference in lettuce dry weight, quality parameters and fruit and leaves nutrient content. Now I'm going to explain the results about the open air field trials done in Lleida with tomato crops. As we can see in the graphics, no significant difference were found between control and struvite treatment, except for Agramun in 2019 trials. Struvite was lower in this case. This was because of a lack of basification of the struvite nutrient solution that caused the death of some plants before the harvesting day. However, no significant difference were found in fruit weight and caliber and fruit nutrient content except for calcium, just in one of the trials. About the broccoli crop in the open air field trials, we can see that no significant difference were found in production, except for the same place, Agramun, in 2019, but in this case, the struvite was higher. And there were no significant difference in fruit weight and diameter and fruit nutrients content. Moreover, about the lettuce production, no significant difference were found between treatments, except 
the same place, Agramon, in 2020, but in this case also, estrobite was higher, and there were no difference in fluid nutrients content as well. More other parameters have been studied, such as heavy metals, the nutrient reminding in the soil, the microbiota of the soil, and they will be available on Life and Rich Project webpage. And as main conclusion, just to say that for the first time, estrobite has been used in fertigation in edible crops, that estrobite and ammonium nitrate products used as fertilizers in fertigation system for tomato, broccoli, and lettuce crops were equally effective in total yield, fresh or dry matter, and quality product to conventional fertilizers, both in greenhouse and open air conditions in most of the cases. An ammonium nitrate product can be used as fertilizer under consideration of the ammonium tolerance of the crop variety or species. Thank you so much for your attention. And I'm going to stop sharing. Thank you, Mar. Thank you. Um, I will continue now with uh, the uh, uh, results obtained from the uh, LCA and LCC of Life and Rich solution. And also we'll finish it with the um, business plan and some notes of, uh, on replicability and transferability and also finishing with the main final conclusions. Uh, I will share my screen again. And let me know if you can see it. Yes, we can see it, Adriana. Perfect. Uh, so starting with the uh, uh, LCA and LCC of Life and Rich, uh, we have uh, uh, assumed two scenarios uh, that we have assessed. Um, apart from compared to the base case. So in the base case, we have a nutrient removal of wastewater treatment plant um, and application of chemical fertilizers in the agriculture separately. Uh, we have studied the full enriched case. It's a P and uh, phosphorus and nitrogen removal at wastewater treatment plant through estrate and ammonium salts and uh, full phosphorus and nitrogen fertilization from recovered fertilizers in the field. Uh, and for the uh, second scenario studied, which is the right enriched case, um, we have phosphorus and nitrogen recovery at wastewater treatment plant through estrobite, and we have uh, full phosphorus and partial nitrogen fertilization from estrobite and also uh, the rest of nitrogen fertilization coming from chemical fertilizers in the field. So uh, we have uh, take different uh, several assumptions in order to have these assessments done. Uh, the, uh, we, we assume that the file requires all the fertilizers produced and we considered an estrobite cell price of uh, 350 euros per ton and ammonium salt of uh, 410 euros per ton. Uh, also cost of labor of uh, uh, 40 car euros per person a year. Uh, these are also considered, uh, you will see it uh, later in the, in the business uh, plan. For financial projections, we also had estimated uh, an 85% reduction in anti-scaling consumption regarding the uh, um, data obtained from the wastewater treatment plan before and after the life and reach uh, project implementation and also 20% of sludge redu production reduction and we considered ammonium nitrate produced at 24% of nitrogen content in weight uh, that comes from the results in the pilot plant. Uh, so uh, main results from LCA are related to the indicators of global warming, stratospheric ozone depletion, and mineral resources scarcity. Uh, you can see that it uh, the, the um, both uh, enriched scenarios have a reduction in uh, these uh, main indicators, 
um, uh, this reduction is uh, bigger for the uh, case where we recover phosphorus and nitrogen using estrobite, but also ammonium salts. For all indicators, the enriched case study has a little increase in the wastewater treatment plant impact, but a significant decrease in the filed impact uh, due to a reduction in the chemical fertilizers use. Um, and um, at, the, at the right, uh, we have uh, um, uh, at the tailored uh, of the impact in global warming, uh, attending to different consumptions that we have um, on the on the uh, both scenarios studied, and you can see that uh, there is an increase on the, on of the impact due to crystallizer unit in the case of uh, uh, only phosphorus uh, recovery from estrobite in the rich. Uh, case and also a crystallizer and nitrogen recuperation units for the full and rich uh, case scenario. Uh, but we also uh, can see this uh, huge decrease in the impact of the fertilizers due to recovered products. Regarding the life cycle cost uh, assessment, it was uh, estimated um, a uh, capex of 5.2 million in the case of enriched nitrogen and phosphorus recovery, and uh, a little lower for 4.5 million of euros in case of enriched. And for uh, operation costs, we have uh, around uh, 232 kilo euros uh, regarding the recovery of uh, nitrogen and phosphorus. Uh, as estrobite and ammonium salt, and uh, around uh, 2,000 kilo euros uh, in the case that uh, we only recover uh, nutrients in estrobite. Uh, you can see also a uh, uh, detail for the OPEX by category, and you can see that uh, the main costs are due to electricity, and we also uh, compensate uh, this consumption with the cogeneration that uh, uh, is performed in the wastewater treatment plant. And also the chemical consumption that we see uh, before uh, changing in the impact, it uh, obviously has uh, an impact on the uh, on the wastewater treatment plant for uh, the enriched nitrogen uh, enriched nitrogen and phosphorus case we have a really higher consumption of chemicals comparing to the baseline and a little bit higher in case of only uh, enriched beet this is due to the use of uh, nitric acid to uh, help precipitate the uh, ammonium salt and uh, also, as uh, as uh, mentioned, it, the um, the total opex in the wastewater treatment plan uh, can be reduced if we take into account the the savings in sludge production and anti-scaling uh, reduction. And we have a, a similar, uh, maybe a little bit higher opex uh, for the field. Uh, in case of nitrogen and phosphorus recovery. Uh, but uh, at the end, uh, if we attend to the total uh, costs of the of the um, life and rich solution, which covers both uh, wastewater treatment plan and the uh, uh, and the uh, field, uh, we can see that there is a, a reduction in uh, in total costs for both uh, for both the scenarios. Uh, being a little bit higher for the enriched nitrogen and phosphorus case than for uh, phosphorus uh, enriched case due to this use uh, intensive use of uh, um, nitric acid to precipitate the, uh, the um, ammonium salt. Going down to the business plan and replicability and transferability of life enriched solution, I would like to uh, share with you the business model that we have developed. There are one business model specific for fertilizer production. This would be from the point of view of the utilities of the wastewater treatment plant operation. And um, 
It, uh, the, the, the key activity would be this fertilizer production, um, but also consultancy for end users on product characteristics. And um, as the value proposition, um, it, there is a sustainable fertilizers production that come from recovered resource. Um, the customer segments that we have identified are two. Uh, first, we have the fertilizer producers uh, that are assumed to taking the main production of the fertilizers in the wastewater treatment plant, since these fertilizers can be uh, included in the um, in the current uh, production chain chain of um, of uh, conventional fertilizers. Uh, also, we have to take into account that, uh, of course, the uh, mm, market share of fertilizers that would be coming from wastewater treatment plants, it's uh, really uh, low, around 1 to 3 percent, depending on the fertilizer uh, market share of all the, all the market uh, of fertilizers that we have uh, right now in Spain. Uh, and then we have another customer segment uh, that it's the, uh, the farmers, uh, local farmers, uh, associations, cooperatives. And in this case, it's, um, it's thought that the fertilizers can be directly sold to uh, this customer segment in uh, smaller quantities for their, uh, their use at uh, local, regional um, um, site. Um, this is uh, the, the detail. I, I just want to, to uh, highlight the uh, the main points. So uh, going now to the business model that we uh, develop for uh, the technologies from the engineering point of view regarding the um, uh, the uh, designing, construction, implementation of life and reach process. Um, the, the key activities would be the designing and construction of crystallization and uh, ammonium salt uh, processes. Uh, they are considered to be turnkey projects and the value proposition is the, um, the turkey projects for phosphorus and nitrogen recovery processes in wastewater treatment plants. So in this case, the wastewater treatment plants would be um, uh, one of the uh, main customer segments. But we also have uh, considering uh, as a customer segment the administration uh, because uh, the administration owns the wastewater treatment plant facilities and we uh, are uh, considering also um, administration at uh, municipal, uh, regional uh, level. Um, as we will comment now, um, it is need to take into consideration the role of the administrations when it comes to implement this type of um, of um, processes in wastewater treatment plants because uh, they uh, have a significant um, investment uh, needed and for the process to be uh, profitable uh, at this point at least it would be um, needed some type of administration pushing or um, incentives. So uh, with this said, uh, moving on to the financial projections, they have been performed for one for each business model. Uh, regarding the wastewater treatment plants, we have uh, considering for a forecast of five years that um, uh, the investment needed would be uh, around three uh, million of euros. Um, but uh, here in this scenario, we have considering um, that the administration would found uh, would financing the uh, capital costs for implementing this uh, this um, this process in the wastewater treatment plant, and also to have a, a return of um, of incomes and uh, in order to maintain 
uh, prices uh, mention it of uh, 350 euros per ton for per ton of estrovite and for 10 euros per ton of ammonium salt it should be considered some type of subsidies uh, of 15% in case of estrovite and estimated at 27% in case of ammonium salt uh, to considering um, uh, a payback of, of, of one year. Uh, of course, this can be uh, submitted to a sensitivity analysis. This can change. We have to take into account the uh, market trends and the market uh, evolution. Um, but for the uh, um, for the uh, point of view uh, from we we from which we have studied this. Uh, uh, forecast, uh, we have considered this uh, this percentage. Also for financial projections regarding uh, the engineering point of view, it is considered an initial investment of uh, 3.5 uh, million euros. Uh, and in this case, because we are talking about turnkey uh, projects, uh, we also have considered a payback of, uh, of one year uh, to uh, recover the uh, investment and have uh, and start to have some uh, revenues. Um, just for for the last part, uh, a few uh, notes regarding transferability and replicability sites because we uh, don't have enough time to go into detail. But regarding transferability to other European countries, we uh, have uh, developed uh, uh, several criteria that we uh, have to take into account when we are planning to adapt a business uh, plan to other European countries. Um, and the summary of them would be uh, the high land use for crop growth, a high use of conventional fertilizers, uh, climate conditions, soil requirements if they have excess of depletion of some nutrient, and also different particularities for each uh, country. In our case, we have considered for the study Italy, um, from the point of view of the sludge handling cost. Uh, so this is, would be a way to uh, make profit uh, from the from the life and rich uh, solution, uh, relying strongly in the sludge handling costs, uh, because as we said, the uh, process reduces the uh, the sludge production. We have taken into consideration uh, Denmark. They have already a uh, marketable estrovite. Uh, they have a national legislation. Also, the technology uh, proved in the in the project is uh, the phosphorine technology, which is implemented full scale in uh, in the three um, wastewater treatment plants in in Denmark. So there is already uh, developed. Uh, value chain there, our uh, market and legal framework to that, that allows to uh, commercialize estrovite, but is, there is still room for including these uh, new processes to uh, recover fertilize, to recover nutrients and use the fertilized produce as proposed in life uh, and rich um, solution. And finally, we have selected uh, Netherlands in this case uh, because there is a particular strong willingness from private companies like ICL to use these recovered products and integrate them into their process, specifically regarding estrovite uh, that can be uh, included in the in the production, different production processes that uh, actually uh, uses phosphate, rocket, uh, phosphate rocks. Uh, as the same uh, way that we mentioned it in the uh, in the business model, we uh, commented that uh, it is possible to uh, have as a uh, client the fertilizer companies uh, for them to include this estrovite or uh, even the uh, ammonium salt into their conventional production processes. And uh, also regarding the replicability sites studied in Spain. We have considered uh, three replicability cases, each of uh, them because they have uh, different particularities with, uh, compared to the baseline of wastewater um, treatment plant of Murcia Este. One of them have been um, selected because it is a, um, 
high capacity, one of the of the biggest uh, wastewater treatment plants in in Spain, and it shows a high, uh, really high potential for peer recovery. Uh, it is not uh, uh, the case of Murcia Este that has the driver of uh, uncontrolled precipitation problems. So it's interesting to consider it the uh, the life and reach process uh, and value change. Uh, considering attending only to the circular economy implementation and the production capacity for fertilizers. The second site that we have uh, considered, it's a, a small facility that uh, has high concentration of uh, phosphates in the centrates. In case of Murcia Este, I have shown the results real, uh, that uses the um, uh, the phosphorus enriched the stream after elutration uh, that comes from the from the primary thickeners. But this technology, as I mentioned it at the introduction of the project, may be applied also to the centrate current if we have the concentrate the, the um, characteristics uh, needed. And one of them is one, uh, is high concentration of of phosphate. So this would be a site that would allow the implementation of partially the life and reach process regarding the only the centrate stream. And the third site considered, um, it was of interest not only because it has itself a, a potential for recovering the phosphorus and nitrogen, but also because it has uh, synergies with the surrounding wastewater treatment plants. Uh, they received uh, sludge from different uh, wastewater treatment plants, the small ones around. So it could be uh, an interesting uh, case of centralized P and, and, uh, and recovery. Uh, and uh, for us, the, the main conclusions of the project would be uh, that uh, apart from the specific ones that we have already commented in the different sections that the parents have been presenting. So life and reach solution has demonstrated technical viability to recover nutrients and to valorize them as fertilizers. The fertilizers tested in crop trials have been proven as an alternative to conventional fertilizers, uh, including estrobite, ammonium salts and uh, sludge. Also, life and rich solution has demonstrated environmental uh, viability um, through the LCA and also economical viability uh, depending on the specific conditions. But uh, there are plausible scenarios where we can uh, we would be able to uh, make a profit from this process implementation. And uh, for for that. Uh, the two the uh, uh, development of the two sustainable business models has been um, uh, um, proof that these financial projections are possible uh, are possible to implement in order to obtain uh, revenues uh, under uh, specific conditions. Uh, in this case, like commented, it was a contribution. Um, financing uh, from the administrations and also currently different type of subsidies in order to uh, adjust to the current market uh, prices of conventional fertilizers. Life and Rich Solution has shown uh, potential replicability uh, with high flexibility to several wastewater treatment plant particularities. So it's a process that can be implemented in a, a lot of wastewater treatment plants that has not to be necessarily uh, big facilities or uh, um, with a certain type of uncontrolled uh, survived precipitation problems. Uh, different casuistics can be um, suitable for the implementation of Life and Rich project. And uh, finally, Life and Rich solution has shown uh, potential transferability to other European countries, considering different specific characteristics of each country, including also the uh, actual national and European legislation context. context. That, as you know uh, and mentioned, it, there, there is a uh, uh, new uh, fertilizer production uh, regulation that comes into force next year that will include uh, estrobite, 
as a marketable uh, fertilizer, but also there is a, a different um, type of uh, uh, regulatory requirements at national level, uh, or for example, in case of Spain, we don't have already uh, a particular national regulation for right commercialization. So it could be a case of a country that has to that uh, will have to adjust and respond this uh, this European uh, regulation. Um, this is uh, all from this uh, part. So uh, now we have the uh, uh, time for uh, uh, questions and, and ask. Uh, I saw that there have been different uh, questions uh, already answered in the in the chat. Uh, I. Uh, I think you marked David. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. All of them have already been answered. But if there are any other further questions, um, please feel free to write them down on the chat, and we can discuss a little bit and reply to them directly. Or otherwise, we can move on to the coffee break and the next presentation. Yeah. Uh... Uh, Belen Artis uh, is commenting that it's important that the legislation change to use estrobite like a fertilizer product. Uh, yes, that uh, uh, I, I think it could be uh, the, the first big step was the change in European legislation, uh, also to, to unify uh, right the uh, uh, estrobite uh, um, specifications uh, for all the uh, uh, European um, European countries, but this, the next step would be to adjust to to this new regulation. Uh, in case that the, the there is already one re uh, national regulation, and to make one uh, if there isn't. And yeah, uh, Ludwig is uh, is uh, mentioning that he will talk about legislation after the break. Yeah. Uh, also, we have another opponent, uh, uh, Jeremy Pinte, uh, to specifically talk about this topic, and we will have uh, both uh, presentations time for question and ask. So, I, I don't know if there is uh, any other question. If if not, uh, it's uh, the same as Nadia mentioned it in in her presentation. If you have any question that can be answered during the session, uh, because there is uh, no time, or because we already have moved on to to the next part, you can write them down, and we will uh, answer them by writing. So don't worry about uh, about uh, this part. If there isn't uh, any more uh, questions, um, um, we uh, have uh, now uh, uh, five yeah. minutes. Or, uh, yeah, there is another yeah. one. No, it's 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 another. There's another question or comment in the in the chat. Yeah, the EOA had just published it now. Strong uh, the uh, and. CO for cast is compared to CO2. I'm not sure uh, of, of, of what this this uh, comment means. Maybe you can elaborate a little bit uh, much. And uh, and yeah, we should move on to the to the coffee break, Adriana. Maybe yeah. a five coffee break is enough. We are Perfect, a bit yeah. out of we can adjust it yeah. to five minutes. Uh, a, a little of, of uh, uh, a little late, so yeah, five minutes of uh, of break. Thank you all so much for uh, share the presentations and for uh, asking the questions and attending the meeting. And we'll be back in five. See you now. Thank you, Adriana.
Welcome everyone again. Uh, I don't know if we are all already here. Um, let's uh, continue. Um, next uh, intervention would be Uh, okay, perfect. Uh, would be uh, would be from uh, Jeremy Pinte, uh, policy uh, officer and CLP and fertilizer products in the uh, DG uh, unit of growth, bioeconomy, chem chemicals, and cosmetics from the European Commission. Uh, so Jeremy, uh, the floor is yours. Okay. Thanks, Adriana, and thanks to the organizer to, um, uh, for the invitation. I'm going to uh, give you a very short presentation about uh, the fertilizing product regulation. And uh, I hope you can all see my screen and uh, hear me well. Um, so, Again, uh, Jeremy Pan from, from Unit uh, F2 in DigiGrow, and we are uh, following uh, the, uh, po the fertilizing product policy and the regulation from 2019. So <clears throat> very shortly, um, if we look at the current regulation, so today on the 30th of, of November, we have something where uh, inputs that are relevant for plant nutrition and agricultural fields are divided into three main topics uh, all, and all regulation. Um, so you have wastewater-based material that are regulated at national level. You have also national fertilizing products that are, again, as, as, as the name says, uh, regulated at um, at, at national level, and the only part that is uh, that, that is offered uh, for EU harmonization is organic fertilizers and some uh, soil improvers. Uh, the regulation dates back to 2003, and in 2019 we have uh, revamped it and to uh, a very large extent extended it, and then moving some of the um, material that are regulated at national level to um, an EU harmonized single market. The harmonization is not compulsory, that's still uh, a on a voluntary base and the company placing it on the market should decide whether they want to go for a sea marked fertilizing product accessing the 27 member states in one go or if they want to uh, to apply uh, different rules and uh, issue their or uh, place their market on, on one national member state and then apply mutual recognition. So <clears throat> there are um, rules to, uh, to, to be complied with. I'll uh, describe them uh, later, but the spirit and the concepts behind um, the fertilizing, the sea marked fertilizing products it's, it is of relevance for the EU single market. And it has to, make, to meet three criteria. First, the agronomic efficiency. It's relevant and trade in sufficiently large volumes to be relevant for the EU single market. And then it's safe for the food chain, the environment, and the human health. So as you see, um, <clears throat> there are some materials uh, that were that are going to be taken out of the national fertilizing product or allowed to uh, the single market on the 16th of July uh, 2022, which is a date uh, where the, uh, the fertilizing product reg regulation will um, enter into application, will, will apply. Um, be aware that there are ongoing modification of the original 2019 regulation. So in fact, if you look at the current version of, of that regulation, you may not found uh, you may not find uh, all the material and fertilizing products that will be 
on the six uh, allowed on the single market on the 16th of July. But I'll talk um, uh, about that a, a bit later. So what is um, um, the uh, three concepts be behind the uh, CE Mark 30 lighting products? So first of all, we have defined functions. So the fertilizing product, which is which bears the the the, the, the C mark, um, is either a fertilizer, liming material, soil improver, growing medium, and so on. So you have different functions, and that's uh, what the 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 most um, uh, relevant uh, interest or objective of placing it on the market for uh, for farmers. This uh, fertilizing product is composed of one or multiple components. For the time being, uh, we do have 11 um, uh, component material that are uh, 11 categories, and we are in the process in the coming days to publish uh, three additional uh, regulation, amending the regulation from 2019 to populate uh, three uh, three more uh, component material categories. So it piles up to 14 for the time being, but we are working also on a 15th one. Um, and I've highlighted um, the one on the slide that are um, relevant to my understanding of um, uh, for uh, for wastewater uh, material that could be recovered. So uh, we and um, before the coffee break we talked about uh, struvite, uh, and this is going to be very soon published, and will enter into application on the 16th of July next year. Uh, some oxidation material is also going to be published, and we are working on uh, defining a new category of high purity material. And uh, we are also working on providing uh, more explicit, more detailed criteria um, on how a material could belong to uh, the uh, component material category 11 core byproduct. So once a manufacturer has decided or designed a fertilizing product with a function and uh, based on, on a recipe that uh, mix different components, then it has to, they have to go through um, the conformity assessment. And the rules and the procedure to apply through the conformity assessment depends on the function, on the ingredient of the fertilizing product, and once the conformity assessment is finalized with the uh, product meeting the criteria in FPR, the product can be placed on the market bearing the CE mark. So one thing um, we have to bear in mind when uh, uh, either at a manufacturing level designing a new fertilizing product based on recovered material from wastewater or us in the Commission uh, trying to um, amend and in order to allow those materials uh, in, in, in C marked fertilizing product, we have to bear in mind that um, in fact we are talking about uh, uh, material that belongs to the waste uh, area and uh, FPR is allowed in some cases to provide an end of waste status. And this end of waste uh, um, status is um, is granted uh, through uh, meeting uh, the criteria of FPR. So in fact, once a product has been uh, assessed as uh, complying with FPR criteria, then the end of waste status is reached and it can be placed on the market. So you see an example here uh, for uh, CMC12, uh, Struvite, and we are going to work on, 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 on that for, uh, for additional uh, categories. Because in fact, um, the regulation, as I mentioned, the regulation was adopted in June 2019, uh, but we are very busy uh, rolling out its application on the 16th of July next year. 
so we have designed a couple of uh, guidance documents. We are working also on harmonized standards that could be used to uh, justify that a product complies with FPR uh, regulation. But we are also working on FPR development. I've already mentioned uh, the uh, Delegated Act amending uh, the regulation from 2019, uh, allowing struvite uh, as a recovered material into uh, fertilizing products. We are working on others uh, like high purity material or uh, detailing uh, the criteria for byproducts. And we hope to have all this ongoing development ready uh, for the 16th of July, 2022. Um, uh, so in fact, when the regulation kicks in, all the, uh, all the most relevant and economic, from an economic perspective or circularity perspective, the most relevant material could be uh, from day one uh, part of fertilizing product. This doesn't mean that we are not going to keep an eye on what the market, the, uh, the academia uh, are cooking in order to integrate as quickly as possible new material that are meeting the first criteria that I've this, this, this described, um, agronomic efficiency, um, relevance for an EU single market and safety. So, after uh, July 2022, we are going to have um, uh, look at studies to identify relevant material that could be integrated into uh, into the fertilizing product regulation. That's all from my side. Uh, so that was a quick overview of the current and future uh, regulation. I hope it has answered some of the questions raised be just before the coffee break. You have uh, some details to get in touch with us. And if you are interested in the current work, the current ongoing work or the future one, we uh, advise you to um, have a look at our uh, platform or uh, CRKBC where we have um, open, uh, an open library uh, on the fertilizing products and the work uh, performed by the expert group on this. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Jeremy, uh, for your presentation. Um, I'm, uh, uh, we have a planet uh, a quick question and ask uh, time for now, but uh, uh, I don't see any questions uh, in the in the chat, and we are a little bit behind schedule. So um, I would uh, recommend to uh, move on to to the uh, uh, next part. Uh, we will be uh, talking about uh, uh, a little bit of uh, about the future of nutrient recovery. And for this part, we will have a, a first uh, presentation from uh, Ludwig Hermann uh, the, uh, uh, regarding the fertilizers, agriculture sector needs. And then uh, um, me from Stakwa will be uh, sharing with you a presentation about fertilizer trends and other applications of nutrient recovery. So. Uh, we have with us uh, Ludwig Hermann, which, uh, who is the president of the European Sustainable Phosphorus Platform. Uh, Ludwig, uh, when you're ready, we are. Yes, uh, thank you. Thank you for having me invited to this uh, interesting event. And uh, I'm glad to present to you uh, the, let's say, uh, what, we, what we perceive as, as framework and as developments. Uh, within this whole uh, uh, world of uh, nutrients and everything. And I'm glad that my presentation is not too much overlapping with Jeremy's, uh, because I didn't know that Jeremy is giving a presentation here. So uh, I'm starting with the framework. And what do we have here? We have uh, several crises uh, in the air currently, a climate, a biodiversity, and of course also a food security. Crisis. Uh, we have not achieved good water quality. We are 
transgressing planetary boundaries with phosphorus and nitrogen. We are far from achieving, unfortunately, the ambitious sustainable development goals, and we are still uh, uh, emitting uh, more greenhouse gases and uh, ever increasing amounts of greenhouse gases. Uh, so uh, the uh, uh, fact, on the other hand, is that we need fertilizers for food, food security. We cannot. Uh, stay without fertilizer. And as an answer to all these, to this framework, to these challenges, uh, the uh, European Commission came up with the European Green Deal and uh, with several strategies embedded in this Green Deal, that, which is the farm to fork strategy, the biodiversity strategy, chemical strategy, zero pollution action plan, and the circular economy action plan. Uh, and you can see all these uh, uh, strategies uh, uh, also centered around the farm to fork strategy, uh, which has, of course, a direct, a direct impact on nutrients and on fertilizer use. And the most important uh, goal within this uh, farm to fork strategy is to mitigate soil, air, and water pollution by increasing nutrient use efficiency. And uh, the target set is to reduce nutrient losses by 50% by 2030. So we have not even 10 years time to achieve that. Uh, by developing integrated nutrient management plans between the commission and the member states, and by having 25% of the EU agricultural land under organic farming by 2030. And of course, also others, other framework conditions apply, including the bio-based and circular economy. Uh, indirect uh, impacts on nutrient and fertilizer use are coming from uh, reducing greenhouse gas emission. As you, as you know, agriculture emits about 10% of the global greenhouse gas emissions from which 70% uh, are attributed to livestock. Uh, so we uh, need to reduce critical feed materials. We need to find alternative feed materials. And we have just recently uh, come to a conclusion and come to an agreement about the future common agricultural policy, uh, including uh, uh, Eco scheme payments to farmers uh, amounting to 25% of the first pillar support payments. So the first pillar support payments are payments that go directly to the farmers, and 25% of them should be assigned to eco activities, to environmental and environmentally beneficial activities of farmers. Uh, we have, of course, and uh, Jeremy already showed this uh, very nicely and well understandably, that uh, uh, the uh, nutrient and agriculture related policies are also uh, framed and embedded in water policies, water policies, and you are particularly in uh, coming from this water sector with your project. Uh, of course, the circular economy, but also the chemical strategy and the zero pollution action plan and the critical raw materials. And as Jeremy already said, the uh, uh, fertilizing product regulation uh, is, let's say, one of the flagship uh, achievements, one of the flagship uh, uh, legal acts coming from this circular economy. Uh, first, it was a communication, and then it became an action plan. And I don't need to go further into the questions of the fertilizing product regulation, as Jeremy already presented them very nicely. But one remark for you in, in the Enrich project may be relevant. Uh, Jeremy talked about the high purity products, and high purity products uh, include, in principle, ammonia salts, but ammonia salts as currently understood are uh, coming from uh, 
let's say, uh, either production processes, but if they come from wastewater treatment, uh, they should come from air purification activities. And as I understand, your project is uh, a liquid-liquid, so it's an ion exchange process, which may not be directly covered by the current proposal of CMC 15. So please have a look at it and and uh, let's see what, what are the potential uh, shortcomings. Uh, of course, uh, the transition is also enabled by Horizon 2020, and we have two missions included. One is the Caring for Soil is Caring for Life mission, and the second mission that is relevant to agricultural and aquaculture activities is the mission Starfish 2030 to restore our oceans and waters. And uh, one activity that uh, Jeremy didn't mention that is also underway is uh, finding uh, more sectors where we could get uh, European end of waste uh, criteria. So you know that end of waste is always related to national end of waste criteria, and it would be beneficial for the single market to have more products uh, for which end of waste is uh, determined by European legal acts. And we as a, as a European Sustainable Phosphorus Platform together with many other stakeholders, including from the water sector, have proposed uh, to include uh, end of waste uh, for materials recovered from or grown in wastewater like algae, for example. So what is the effect on, on, on business and on the agricultural activities? Uh, we, we need to maintain high yields, uh, but we need also to reduce industrial and agricultural greenhouse gas emissions, and we need to in, reduce nutrient losses, as I said, by 50 percent by 2030. Uh, the proposal uh, assumes that this may lead to about 20% less fertilizer use by 2030. And the framework that we have uh, does not allow for degrowth in food production. We, we need to uh, uh, care for nutrient security for, for uh, the whole global population. We see a certain industry transition already underway from commodity supplier to service provider. Uh, and of course, we see the use of digital data and digital models underway, and also initiatives for carbon farming, including, for example, the Agoro Carbon Alliance uh, by Yara, proposed by Yara. Uh, so the farming sector needs tailor-made products and also should get incentives uh, for environmental services. And of course, the products need to be pollutant free, highly efficient, rather more efficient than conventional fertilizers, and avoiding greenhouse gases. And uh, the graph here shows that, for example, the ammonium sulfate or ammonium nitrate solutions that you produce are really uh, extremely beneficial in terms of uh, uh, emissions. So. Uh, the, their emissions are indeed lower than emissions from co conventional uh, products like uh, calcium, ammonium, nitrate, or urea, and this is what we need to achieve. So uh, what we think is that we need uh, the different sectors and cooperation between the different sectors, uh, like the wa wastewater and the fertilizer sector, uh, to take a leading role in closing nutrient cycles, to assess processes and products for emission and pollution benefits, and to support operators towards selecting the lowest impact technologies, and of course uh, to contribute to continue uh, to contribute to improve uh, recovery and recycling strategies. And at the same time, we need policies that support. Uh, a circular farm to fork strategy and uh, a carbon positive and soil health protecting farming practices. And uh, 
So we need also policies that support that. And we have now this 25% uh, reserved for eco schemes within the pillar one of the common agricultural policies. But we may need more. And what is possible is shown here on these two photographs uh, that you see. Uh, you see the same landscape in 2006 and in 2018 after biodiversity restoration has been undertaken at farm level. It's a, a large farm. Uh, it's La Casinazza farm in Italy, close to Milano. So what could be the, 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 the ways and the pathways towards this uh, support, additional support, uh, rewarding greenhouse gas emission savings, uh, well, we could think of including farming and uh, carbon farming specifically uh, to the ETS system, uh, the European trading system. And as you know, that with the current future market prices of CO2 is already at 75 euro. And uh, if we consider that the recycled N, as you did in your project, could save about three to four tons uh, CO2 equivalents per ton N compared to, to the Harbour Bosch process. This could uh, create significant benefits. Uh, but of course, we can also have uh, you have uh, anaerobic digestion there, and biomethane can save 1.6 kilogram CO2 equivalents per cubic meter of uh, methane compared to national gas, so uh, natural gas. So we have uh, a number of uh, potential keys uh, to uh, uh, get business opportunities, including, uh, of course, national legislation we see in Germany and in Switzerland already in enforced uh, obligatory B recycling, and this may be extended. Uh, to N and other nutrients. And yes, just uh, a few words. We are the European Sustainable Phosphorus Platform, uh, a European uh, body membership-based, membership-funded, about 50 members from very different sectors, including uh, regulators, uh, public authorities, but also the industry, fertilizer industry, and uh, the uh, startups, technology companies, and the science sector, of course. And we try to find common positions. We are moderating processes to improve nutrient stewardship. And I need to remind you of the next, uh, hopefully, uh, in presence, uh, European Sustainable Phosphorus Conference in Vienna in June 2022. And of course, we are also uh, organizing other events. And we are dealing with all these dossiers that we discussed and I presented and uh, uh, try to exchange information between regulators and members. And I thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Ludwig, so much for, for your presentation. Uh, I will uh, continue with the uh, next one in in this topic. And if you have questions, you just remember you can write them down on the chat, and then we will be answering them. I will uh, share my screen again. Uh, let me know if you can see it. Yes, we can see it, Adriana. Perfect. So for this uh, last uh, presentation, uh, before we go to the roundtable uh, with uh, questions and asks, um, we would like to um, introduce uh, a little bit of what's next in nutrient recovery. Um, <clears throat> from one side uh, regarding fertilizer trends, but also with uh, uh, another uh, possibility. So starting with uh, nutrient recovery for fertilizing use, um, I would like to, to share with you this uh, um, project, uh, the Walnut project that uh, is uh, um, developing uh, 
Це таква. It stands for Closing Wastewater Cycles for Nutrient Recovery, and it's an H2020 funding um, project, which has uh, started uh, a few months ago, uh, last uh, September, and that it's uh, led by uh, Cartier Foundation. Uh, so the objective of this project is to develop technology solutions to redesign nutrient supply chains for from wastewater and brines in this case uh, the project will carry out five pilot demonstrations in europe of which one uh, will be led by Zetaqua together with the aqua and in this case um, the role of Zetaqua and the aqua is uh, uh, related uh, with uh, life and rich uh, project um, results and it's uh, related to the production uh, pr uh, production system of uh, smart biofertilizers, uh, which will be uh, developed consisting of OptiBlender, uh, capable of combining nitrogen from ammonium salts and phosphorus from estrobite, and also potassium with plant growth stimulants of biological origin, uh, in order to, to have this uh, uh, optimizers and uh, renderized uh, smart biofertilizers, but taking uh, as uh, the base the uh, fertilizers uh, produced with nutrient recovery from wastewater treatment plants. Um, so uh, a few um, notes on, on the project, uh, it will be taking another step in the development of technology based on absorption with cellulites and membrane contactors to recover nitrogen in the form of fertilizers. Uh, we have um, seen in uh, life and rich uh, product results that we have developed and tested this, uh, uh, this system at pilot scale. So we uh, intend to improve the um, the uh, nitrogen nitrogen recovery. Um, with that, also concentrate the um, uh, the total uh, nitrogen content on the on the uh, ammonium salt, and also uh, it will be developed a business model and exploitation plan of these smart bio-based fertilizers with uh, these uh, ammonium estrobite salts and uh, PGVs. Um, uh, it will also will include the development of an intelligent formulation adapted to the soil type of biofertilizer, whose effectiveness in agriculture will be uh, demonstrated in file tests. And um, also, uh, it's a, it's a um, KPI uh, to comply with the rich legislation in terms of this smart biofertilizer produce. So uh, you can see that the project it, uh, uh, has a, a strong uh, link with life and rich project results and it allows to go one step further and produce this, um, this uh, improved uh, bio-based fertilizers that uh, they are intent to uh, even um, uh, achieve higher higher uh, yields if possible. That even with uh, um, with uh, conventional uh, fertilizers, which is one of the of the uh, uh, pendant themes, maybe pendant topics with with this uh, alternative fertilizers. Um, and also the other uh, part of uh, nutrient recovery trends. Uh, when we are talking of nutrient recovery in, in uh, wastewater treatment plants, it's, uh, it's related in this case to nitrogen um, and the production of uh, ammonia. Um, in this case, to uh, go with uh, green hydrogen production. And also, this is an interesting um, option because, um, as, uh, as uh, we've mentioned, and it is now uh, being developed this uh, new fertilizer products regulation to include estrobite. But it is also true that it's uh, not the same uh, um, case for um, ammonium salts. There is a, a long way uh, to uh, to go. Um, of course, that estrobite it's included as a commercial fertilizer is a big step. Uh, that uh, may uh, lead to easier the way uh, for ammonium salts to, to be included, but we are uh, further uh, 
uh, to achieve that. So it's interesting to think about other possible um, options of uh, take advantage of this uh, re uh, nitrogen recovering potential that we have on the wastewater treatment plants. And in this sense, as mentioned, the, the, uh, uh, the line will go through the green hydrogen production. So uh, the conventional ammonia production systems uh, are based uh, in, in uh, natural gas, coal and oil. Uh, they account for 98% of total ammonia production, and these are uh, systems with a high carbon footprint. Uh, so, uh, the um, in um, in this context, um, we have to uh, also ask why we um, go with uh, ammonia instead of hydrogen uh, when we are trying to produce it in, in uh, wastewater treatment plants. And at the end, um, it comes to uh, these uh, main topics that we have here. And the thing is that uh, uh, ammonia versus wing hydrogen, which is the, uh, the, um, the um, objectives of, of production, is less stringent conditions. Um, I, I, I'm so sorry, I'm working from home and they are Peeking to the, to the door several times, uh, I, I will uh, just have to to absent uh, a minute. So so sorry for for the interruption. Just one one minute. I'm back. I'm so sorry for the interruption. Uh, I think it's almost mandatory to have some type of interruption when working from home. This time it's been me. Uh, so uh, continuing with uh, where I, I left it. Um, I uh, can, can you see the, the screen? I think yes now. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Uh, so um, I was comment on this advantage of uh, going with uh, ammonia production instead of directly uh, hydrogen. So it is uh, less stringent. It has less stringent conditions for transport, and also it um, allow it allows a diversity of uses, both for typically and uh, with simple transformation processes. Also, it has a high energy density, which is also related with transport advantages. And uh, it can be used in mixed gasoline engines up to 20% without requiring modifications. Also, advantage of energy storage to uh, cope fluctuations uh, in demand are related to uh, ammonia production instead of, uh, of hydrogen. So, um, going back to uh, wastewater treatment plants uh, baseline, why does this apply to wastewater treatment plants or other enriched? Uh, stream producers. So the the wastewater treatment plants are suitable sources of uh, ammonia, either for energy or for fertilizer production. So as uh, I was uh, comment first, it's a uh, it's an uh, option that uh, uh, it's possible to continue to keep exploring and uh, to see which uh, type of process is uh, if. Uh, Energy production or fertilizer production can be uh, can be uh, more interesting. Also, ammonia appears in high concentrations in centrates and anaerobic uh, digestion, 
we have commented uh, high ammonium concentrations in, in this case, in the centrate discovered that we have uh, uh, used in the um, in the train of cellite adsorption and membrane contactors. And it also appeared in high concentrations in other applications and other streams like Mainer, Lichetes, on Echo Park. So there are um, uh, different sources for this uh, nitrogen recovery that would be uh, would be um, potentially suitable for extracting nitrogen, not only to fertilizer producer produce production, but also for um, this uh, ammonia production. So just uh, uh, to end with uh, really quick uh, numbers for you to to get an idea of the. Uh, potential of nitrogen recovering in Spain. We have considered uh, 39 wastewater treatment plants uh, with a flow of uh, 435 cubic meters per day and uh, considering also uh, 6,000 um, 6, milligrams per uh, liter of ammonium and a recovery efficiency of 8. With, uh, with these numbers, we could uh, be uh, able to recover uh, 3 thousand of tons of nitrogen per year, which could be uh, transformed into uh, 19, uh, point, uh, 19 500, uh megawatts per hour of year. And this would be a consumption uh, of uh, equal to 5,000 cars per year. So it's a, it's a, a really um, amount of uh, of um, potential energy production uh, only with this uh, um, baseline, um, but of course this this potential could be um, could be uh, also higher. So currently, part of this uh, nitrogen loss is uh, the sludge, and part is returned to the process, increasing the cost associated with uh, this elimination. So the energy recovery allows both to reduce operating costs in wastewater treatment plants, but also to reduce the carbon footprint. And in addition to having the option of accumulating energy in the form of ammonia with all the other touches that already have commented. So uh, it's uh, up, up to, to hear my, my presentation, just to, to get this, uh, put on the table this, this uh, uh, two ideas of uh, of trends on nutrient recovery on wastewater treatment plants. And um, now we, we will um, moving on first, if, um, if uh, I may, to the round table. And after we can uh, answer uh, these, um, these questions from this uh, part of the presentations and also the ones that uh, come from the from the round table. So um, uh, like I said, we will uh, start now uh, with uh, uh, with the round table. Um, we regret to inform you that uh, two of the participants uh, that we have uh, invited to the round table have finally not been able to join us today to personal issues, um, but we are pleased to have with us uh, Jordi Julia, uh, who is the head of the technical area of the Farming Cooperative Progress Garbin Magrat de Mar in Spain. And we will discuss with him about the opportunities and barriers of using fertilizers uh, from the farmer's point of view, as the ones that we uh, have been uh, um, produced in, in Life and Rich. So uh, just uh, um, uh, to know that the intervention will be made in, in Spanish. And at the end, I uh, will uh, make the, the translation to, to English so all you can uh, make uh, uh, all questions you have. Um, then we will open the, the question and ask term for uh, for Jordi, but also for all the opponents during the during the um, the journal. Um, hola, Jordi. Uh, hola, bienvenido. Tal, buenos días. Buenas. Gracias. Bien, pues uh, habiendo escuchado a, a todos los ponentes y todo lo que habéis explicado, eh, evidentemente 
como técnico de, de un grupo de, de productores de huerta de la zona de Barcelona, pues vemos, eh, bueno, personalmente veo con, con muy buenos ojos este tipo de, de iniciativas de, que, que nos enfocan a una agricultura eh, bueno, de recursos más sostenibles y con esta economía circular que, que presentabais. ¿no? Eh, al final, eh, la búsqueda de alternativas a los fertilizantes minerales habituales y más en estos días que, que estamos, es muy importante debido a que, la, bueno, como está la economía, los costes y la optimización de los cultivos eh, a nivel de, de rentabilidad, pues es muy complicada. Eh, viéndolo un poco así a grandes rasgos, lo dif diferenciaría un poco en tres patas este, eh, la, la, la idea esta de, de, la, de la recuperación de residuos. ¿no? Uno en, temas, en términos económicos. Otro en el tema de seguridad alimentaria y finalmente, tampoco el menos importante, el de eficiencia, ¿no? que esto ya marca carreras con lo que, ha, con lo que nos ha explicado, pues bueno, parecía que no había una diferencia significativa en la aplicación de soluciones nutritivas o, o abonos, digamos, habituales a la, a la aplicación de estrubita. En términos de económicos, ahí sí que lo desconozco, que por eso sería una pregunta. Eh, claro, lo que se busca hoy en día es una rentabilidad en el cultivo. Es decir, la aplicación de este producto entiendo que sería más económica, ya sea por hectárea, por lo que sea, eh, que la aplicación de fertilización al uso, ¿no? Fertilización normal o... Esto ya es una, una pregunta que, que, que la dejo ahí, que, no, que la desconozco. Y por otro serían las, las fuentes de... Es decir, cuando se obtiene la estrubita, ya os digo, eh, disculpad porque hablo también de, desde el desconocimiento. Cuando, la, las, o sea, cuando queréis obtener estrubita, la fuente de obtención cuando tenéis el resultado final, varía mucho dependiendo de, de la fuente de, de, de donde salga el producto y cuán, el nivel de, de estandarización que tendríamos en este producto, cuál sería. Porque esto nos limitaría mucho a la hora de aplicar, debido a restricciones por certificaciones eh, de calidad, etc. Y, y bueno, y nada más. Y, eh, por mi parte, bueno, lo de seguridad alimentaria... El tema de patógenos, si, si va ligado al ser un agua recuperada, un producto de, que viene de un residuo, evidentemente, el nivel de patógenos, la concentración de metales pesados y todo esto estaría regulado, cómo estaría controlado, si todos los lotes o, bueno, o la manera en que se dividieran la producción estarían todos estandarizados de la misma manera, eh, bueno, etcétera. ¿no? Si podíamos disponer de un producto homogéneo siempre. siempre. Y ya está. Gracias, pues bueno, no. en general lo vemos correcto, pero hay ciertos puntos, ciertas dudas que deberíamos resolver antes de empezar a aplicar. Vale, uh, muchas gracias. Haré ahora un breve recap de lo que, de lo que has dicho en, en inglés, eh, intentando también contestar a lo que, a lo que comentabas. Um, So, uh, uh, thank you, Jordi, for, for the intervention. Uh, the, uh, um, it's, it's a really, uh, I think, uh, interesting point of view to count with the opinion of the farmer sector, because at the end, uh, you are the uh, end users of these products. And you were um, highlighting that these type of initiatives, these type of projects are really interesting for you to know the results and also to push to develop this uh, type of alternative fertilizers. Um, also, you uh, mentioned that it's really interesting have these uh, alternative fertilizers uh, to include comparing with, uh, <coughs> with, <coughs> sorry, with conventional uh, alternative of fertilizing also because of the not only the costs but also because 
uh, the, the, the trends and the strategies regarding to adjust the fertilizer, the fertilizing content uh, are changing. So a more uh, flexible um, type of, of uh, fertilizer would be of your interest too. And um, then uh, you mentioned it that uh, from uh, uh, your perspective, uh, but also it's shared with, I think, with all, all uh, parts involved, there are three key um, elements to, to take into account when you have to decide if use or not use these alternative fertilizers. One of them is uh, the uh, cost of the fertilizer. I uh, commented that um, the costs that we have now are um, orientated too much the market cost for conventional fertilizers. So the cost for you will be, uh, we intend that will be the same uh, because right now we would have to keep going under optimizations, also under um, under uh, market prices adjustment with the changes that are coming. And also we have counting right now of, with incentives from the administration to match these prices uh, with of, of conventional fertilizers. So the other thing that you mentioned in that it's uh, important, it's the, uh, the safety of its use in terms of pathogens um, and other pollutants like metals. So in this um, aspect uh, for the estrovite, the new regulation, the new European regulation will standardize, aims to standardize this, um, these requirements regarding safety and health. So it would be if, if the fertilizer complies with uh, European regulation, it would be the way of certificate its safety for the use. Um, and also you mentioned the efficacy of the fertilizer uh, compared to conventional fertilizers. So uh, in this aspect, uh, like you already pointed out, in life and rich uh, tests, we saw that the efficiency was uh, uh, the same for life enriched fertilizers that for um, conventional ones, but also uh, with uh, more uh, initiatives, more projects like life enriched or the walnut that I mentioned it are intended to improve uh, the fertilizer efficiency with these uh, new combinations all, uh, also with, uh, with um, microorganisms. And the objective is to even increase the efficiency. And if possible, uh, the aim is to have better efficiency than conventional uh, fertilizers, uh, of course. Uh, but it's a uh, it's, uh, next step to, to work uh, with this um, um, achievement of higher efficiency that in life and rich project we didn't study. We just uh, test the fertilizers versus the uh, conventional ones with really good uh, uh, results. So now we um, open the question and ask a turn uh, for, uh, uh, for Jordi but also for all the uh, opponents that we have on the um, on the um, event, I will uh, try to uh, have room for all of them. But we are a little bit of uh, out of time, so um, there's one that I see that it's not answered or not. It's it's already marked at uh, as answered, David. If I'm not uh, wrong. That it's uh, the relationship yeah. between price, quality, and solubility compared with the uh, soluble phosphorus raw materials. This is uh, also an uh, an interesting uh, thing that uh, Jordi mentioned it, and it's also uh, that we have to take into account that estrobite it's not water soluble, 
so it would have to be um, uh, to be uh, diluted with uh, with acid, which is what we have um, tested in life and rich project. Um, but it also would be the possibility to uh, releasing uh, directly acid solid form as a slow fertilizer. This is this would be if we con if we uh, think about its direct use. Uh, from wastewater treatment plants to farmers. If we have to implement it in uh, conventional fertilizers producing chain, uh, we would have to take into account this uh, also this uh, not water solubility. Jordi raised his hand, so maybe he wants to add something. Uh, yes. Yes, uh, una cosa más. Um, El, el rendimiento de este de, de la estrubita en función del tipo de riego tiene tiene alguna diferencia si es aplicado en riego por goteo o alguna restricción en riego por aspersión tocando las partes comestibles de la planta eh, no sé si hay alguna alguna diferencia ahí mm, um, Mar Carreras would you like to answer uh, the question make maybe make a recap in quick recap in English. Um, yes, in, in okay. English, no, no problem. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, Jordi asked if there is some um, difference between the type of irrigation, if it's drip irrigation or um, sprinkler. Um, yeah, we have tried uh, just drip irrigation because it's the one that we use, but I guess that there is. No big difference, and as Adriana told, um, the recovered products have some legislation for the quality, so they don't have to um, contain heavy metals or, or they have just low amount of organic carbon, so this means that they don't have um, a lot of contaminants. So for this reason, they should be safe in different types of irrigation and different crops. Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you. I, uh, I was just uh, commenting on that the, the uh, price for S to write of 350 US per ton uh, was maybe a little, a little bit high. Uh, it's the it's the um, price that we uh, uh, find for estrobite at European level when we uh, make the um, um, the uh, market analysis. But it's true that lately uh, it has been uh, lowering, and also of course it's a thing to to be adjusted um, uh, when when we. Uh, have these new changes in uh, regulation and also the changes uh, um, in, in market trends and new, new European policies regarding, for example, uh, farm to fork strategies. Uh, also, uh, there is another question uh, for uh, uh, Tobias, I think. Uh, do you have relevant experience with this modification already, or this is something at this stage under development for another industrial application under a contract with the company. Uh, let's see when it could be possible to make up and after the potential prote protection for the company. I don't know, maybe if this is uh, for uh, some uh, uh, question and answer during the chat. Uh, I, don't, I, I didn't see it. Yes, it is, it is. Okay, perfect. Yes. I think uh, Jordi wants to add something else. He has raised his hand again. Perfect. Uh, Jordi, um, adelante. No, no, disculpa, no, 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 no tengo nada más que añadir. Okay. No, no, no. Uh, it was from before. Okay. Um, so uh, if there are uh, not more, more uh, questions, just uh, thank you all for your attending, your participation, and also uh, the ask. Uh, it was a pleasure for me to uh, to share with you the results of the project and to uh, uh, to have this uh, final event with with all of you. 
And just remember, if you have any questions, you can also contact us and we will try to, to give you an answer. And uh, also, um, uh, we will be sharing the materials from the, from the event for you to, to have it. So thank you all for coming. And thank I hope we, we will uh, meet again. Sure. Thank you, Adriana. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you.